So, do you want to speak about microwave next? Uh, sure. Yeah. Microwave. Okay, so this is Death is a Warm Blanket by Microwave. They're an alternative rock band from Atlanta, Georgia. And this is their third album released in September 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 10 tracks long and 29 minutes. So, mm-hmm. what's your thoughts on Microwave's Death is a Warm Blanket? There's, there's quite a few kind of influences at play there. Um, the first song, Leather Daddy, it's three minutes, four seconds long. It opens with this kind of acoustic guitar, almost sounds like a kind of demo. I yeah. would have said okay. and then this kind of almost angsty anxiety ridden lyrics come in at about the kind of 17 second mark and it's I don't know if you're kind of aware of this kind of guy but it kind of reminded me of I think he's kind of previously been described as a kind of an emo rapper Hobo Johnston no no never heard of this guy yeah well, he's got a song or a kind of single in particular called Peach Scone okay uh, which was released in 2018 and it kind of kind of reminded me of that um, yeah there's kind of a few interesting things at, at play there kind of the 44 second mark you've kind of got the drums that come in this kind of screeching guitar um, and then later on in the song there's kind of this ju- juxtaposition to the kind of the, the kind of intro to the song where he's kind of you know it's this kind of acoustic kind of demo sound and then all of a sudden he starts kind of screaming his his lyrics um, yeah I've sort of said it goes balls to the wall mm. hardcore um, sort of hardcore screams he's screaming um, about having a pile of regrets and there's like a real intensity um, that, that comes in after that that sort of restrained um subtle kind of intro yeah and the intro reminded me a little bit of like Deja and Tendu era brand new and there's a lot of that sort of um, kind of emo acoustic sort of stuff on on that album Um, so you know I was quite into that yeah Um, and but there's also like some of the vocal melody reminds me you ever heard the band Marcy Playground I've heard of them, but I can't so think if I've heard any of them. They, I only know one song, and it's called Sex and Candy. And it's basically got this, this um, chorus that goes, I smell sex and candy. And it's like, it's got that a similar kind of vocal melody to that. And it just, it's always good when songs remind you of other songs from like, you know, your youth. Youth, yeah. So, um, I, that I, nostalgia I, I like factor. that subtle nostalgia. Well, that for, for Deja and Tendu, brand new as well. Mm-hmm. So, this song, uh, you know, from the get go is well into this. Um, so, it kind of kind of drew me in. Um, and the, the next song, Float to the Top, um, it, it's still got that kind of brand new vibe to it. A kind of sort of laid back, brand new vibe. But then it goes into this like throat shredding chorus. This like one of my favourite choruses I've heard like all year. Just um, just the the, the that sort of intense uh, screams delivery. And yeah, I just I, I really really like um, the float to the top. Which is interesting because I thought the kind of opening thirty five seconds reminded me of an eel song. I, I, I get the um, there is a sort of Eels vibe to yeah, it yeah aye um, but yeah again like I kind of enjoyed it kind of quite like that kind of lo-fi kind of bridge round about the kind of 53 second mark with this kind of minimal drums kind of trailing guitar sound and then you know you kind of the, the lead singer kind of bursts in with it, that kind of return of that kind of screaming lyrics as we've kind of already said I find it hard to kind of discern the lyrics at times yes like kind of did it decipher but that didn't take away from my kind of appreciation or my kind of enjoyment of the song yeah I um, find that with a, a lot of heavy music yeah certainly with them um, this sort of on the screaming side but, you know it's hard <laughs> it's hard to to, to pick out what, what people are screaming but yeah. most of the time I don't care I just no, I, yeah. I just love the sound of somebody screaming <laughs> like, with intensity and sort of Passion. Uh-huh. I just can't get enough of that shit, to be honest. Like, 
Um, the the lyrics are quite good though. When I looked them up, it's like wake up, dried up in a wet bed, two empty fifths and a mouth of chalk, washed up, torn up, disaffected. My friends don't swim; we float to the top. And it's quite right. So is that is that's that what he's chorus. singing when he's right? Okay. When he starts screaming in the chorus. So it's um, yeah, a cool chorus. Yeah, that is cool. Um, and I like the way. I like the way this album sort of flows in, like through the tracks. There's, at times you, because of because of the different sort of there's the soft parts and then these heavy parts and this ebb and flow. Sometimes you don't really know where one track ends and the next begins. Was, yeah, like you you can just listen to it and and sometimes you think you listen to the same song but just mm. a sort of different a completely different part of that song. Um, which I think is, is really well done the way they've just kind of it's a really good kind of production job and a sort of concept um, that, that they've managed to get these to flow yeah. together so well I noticed that in a, a, kind of few of the songs in particular the the fourth song on the album The Breakman Has Resigned and then the following track Hate TTO I thought they kind of melded quite well um, yeah, into each other, and then there was there was another instance of that happening as well. Um, the sixth track, pull, and then the seventh track, love will tear us apart, as well, um, which is quite a short song. Yeah, it's less than a minute. I think yeah. love, love will tear, love will tear us apart. I think it is. Um, but I'd, yeah, like like um, I I think the break when House resigned into hate TKO was that was kind of the the one that. I, I kind of noticed mm-hmm. because I was just listening to the song and thought it was the same song and then yeah. I looked and said, like, oh, it's a different track. Right. And same with, <clears throat> I think Hate TKO into Pool does a similar thing where it, where it, it does, it changes um, style, but it sounds be- like it's changing style in the same song. Yeah, because um, Pool kind of opens with this kind of atmospheric, almost ethereal kind of melody. Yeah. Um, kind of muted kind of vocals um, which kind of come in at the kind of 12 second mark however then there's the, that kind of that tonal shift again kind of just under the kind of 40 second mark um, where I thought I've kind of written that the kind of vocals pull focus and they kind of they, they kind of appear a, a bit clearer and then there's that return to that kind of heavy guitar sound that we kind of hear in the kind of earlier songs around about the 120 118 mark and again, <laughs> it ends with the the screamers, the, the the screamer, the singer screaming the lyrics. Um, and again, I just thought that again, I suppose with the earlier songs, I quite enjoy that kind of interesting just just position between the kind of restrained lyrics that we kind of spoke about earlier on, and then this kind of return to the kind of screaming. And yeah, it's like harsh sound. it's like um, it's just like a release of like pent up frustration mm. and anger. It kind of it just sort of, sort of plods along relatively calmly, but it's you know the the lyrics are are quite sad and um, I would say all the lyrics are yeah, quite bleak, <clears throat> like sad and, and bleak, and and then that kind of just explodes into like just rage, yeah, um, and it, it's fantastic. I think the way that the, the way that it does that, and it's certainly seems to be a theme um, about like feeling like you haven't achieved anything mm-hmm. or a fear of not achieving anything um, and, and being sort of um, I'm trying to find the song there's lyrics about sort of being trapped in a, in a, in a scene a music scene where, where other bands are, are happy to, to play it safe and um, yeah it's, hate, it's on Hate TK Hope so he talks about he's sort of cynically lamenting the lack of originality in, in music and he sort of says so bleach out all the colours paint it black and grey kill off all your heroes dis- destroy whatever makes you feel unsafe so it, it's like a diatribe on like these bands that are happy to just like put out bland music because that seems to be what's popular and not, and not trying to do something um, with integrity, with integrity, and and you know, unique. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of that 
on this album frustration with that kind of attitude and um, kind of worry of not standing out what would you say your favourite song in that album is? it's hard I think it's quite hard to pick one out because of the way everything kind of flows together mm-hmm. um, when, when I first heard this I think I really enjoyed the first like four tracks and I really like the break when has resigned just because of how how sort of brutal it is um, as it opens and then it kind of uh, sort of calms down and has these soaring kind of clean vocals before bringing back the these sort of dreadful screams and it's got what I was talking about this this sort of hope, hopelessness of of being in um, uh, in a like travelling band and there's lyrics about um, when all our stickers are peeled off of the bathroom we shit in in the places we visit I'll have nothing to show for this um, so if I had to pick my favourite song I think it would be that um, but I think it's more of a it's more of an album you just listen to and from start to whole. finish and appreciate yeah. as a whole and enjoy the way everything just ebbs and flows and and you know merges into one another. I'd agree. Although seeing that carry the, the ninth track on the album, actually that's probably if I had to kind of pick a standout song or a favourite song from yeah. the album, I'd probably choose that one. Um, it's a real earworm, or I found it to be. A, a real earworm. I'm not singing the the, the, the song, singing the kind of lyrics, but I'm, I found myself humming yeah. the melody over and over again. And I think there's quite a lot of kind of interesting kind of vocal delivery within that song, where he kind of does wee interesting falsetto um, bits, yeah. uh, which I really quite enjoyed. I think he does that. He does that throughout the album yeah. as well, um, which is quite cool. I carry for me. I think it's a really good song, and it reminded me a bit of um, like early Weezer, some of it, um, mm-hmm. okay. especially the chorus. It just had that sort of because Weezer, you kind of think of them as like a poppy rock band, but they did have some some real sort of chug to their their and crunch to their their chords and mm-hmm. things early on, um, and and uh, you know I'm talking early Weezer. I'm not talking Black um, Album. Black Album Weezer. <laughs> Um, there's no um, moonwalking naked <laughs> in this, um, but like so, I really like the, I really like the lyrics, um, and I okay, I, I think I've been reading out a lot of lyrics in this episode, but I don't tend to gravitate to lyrics. Mm. Um, I find things I like singing along to. I don't necessarily take it in that much, or you know, I don't I don't go hunting for lyrics, but I just find some of these things jump out of me like on Kari I found my niche in this pile of shit I've got nothing left to prove but there's just nothing else I really want to do so this is what I do um, I just <laughs> it's just a really sort of hopeless um, album um, but I don't know why I, I like that so much uh, another lyric from Kari that I kind of picked out as well I might not have kind of written it down correctly but what I've got here is do you murder me in your lucid dreams oh god I hope you do and plan it out in real life someday soon. Yeah. Um, I thought that was quite cool. And I think the way the way that album ends, um, and part of it, is worth talking about because it's like it's a really beautiful, sorrowful track. Um, and it's got a slow build to this dramatic middle section where the band sound like they're just throwing absolutely every last ounce of energy they have into this kind of um, this moment and um, it, you know for the for the end of the song it returns back to that sorrow beautiful um, sound of the of the opening um, mm-hmm. as, as the, the song fades, fades out um, and again the, the lyrics are quite intriguing um, so when it's all unfolding when you're ripping out your seams when the tides start calling I hope you think of me um, I want to know when it all falls apart that I did my part. That part of it was me. So it's like it's like a it's like a desperate call to be remembered for yeah. something, like recognised and not just fading into it's obscurity uh, amongst the crowd, like you know that famous Kurt Cobain line. 
and it's better to burn out than fade away. What was that Kurt Cobain that said that? Um, well, apparently it was. Oh, really? Apparently in his suicide letter, but <clears throat> it just conjured up that for me. It's just this, yeah, uh, just desperation to 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 make something worth a while. I'll stand the test of time. Yeah, more. and I I think they've done that here because I think it's a, a a really fantastic album and I'd never heard of Microwave before at all what I've heard since is that this is maybe a, a bit different from the sort of thing they've they've released before right okay. um, I think uh, you know maybe this is a bit raw um, and a bit darker than the sort of thing that they've they're known for right um, so I don't know maybe going back and listening to other stuff with Microwave and might not be into it as much mm-hmm. but you know I haven't done that so no neither have I I've but that. <clears throat> that that may be the, the album does just feel like you know, what we were doing what we've been doing isn't enough and they're just absolutely throwing everything into this but it's just full of like sadness and and darkness mm-hmm. Um, and desperation but it's often that kind of stuff that, that breeds like the best the best music I think this is a really good album yeah I think I don't think we've said all I need to say about that I would maybe give this a strong 9 right okay yeah I think I'd go with that I'd probably agree with you there actually 8, eight or 9 for yeah. me yeah absolutely yeah Okay, so that was um, Death is a Warm Blanket by Microwave.